Okay, as you can see in today's video, we're going to go over another problem involving mass defect and binding energy, and we're going to figure out the mass defect and the binding energy for a helium-4 nucleus. So a little introduction here. We have a mass defect and binding energy for helium-4 nucleus. Helium-4, helium is element number two, so it has two protons, but it's helium-4, so we know it also has two neutrons. Those two things together make up the helium-4. Those two things, the protons and neutrons, but those four things, the two protons and the two neutrons, they make up the helium-4 nucleus. And what we're going to do is we're going to add up the mass of those four things before they're bound together in the nucleus. We're going to call that the mass before. Then we're going to take those four things, two protons and two neutrons, put together a nucleus, and that's going to give us our helium-4 nucleus. This is just for the nucleus of the helium-4. And uh, then that's going to be the mass afterwards. And when we find, we add up the mass before and we look at the mass after, we're going to find out that the mass before of the individual constituents, the two protons and two, two neutrons, is greater than the mass of the helium-4 nucleus. And that mass that's missing, so to speak, the difference in mass is the mass defect. And then we can use Einstein's equation or another conversion, which we'll show you also to determine the binding energy and the average binding energy per nucleon. So let's just go ahead and do that. So determine the mass defect, the total, and the average binding energy per nucleon for helium-4 nucleus. In order to do that, we're going to have to find, as I said in the previous slide, the mass of the four things before, two protons and two neutrons, and the mass of the helium nucleus. So we're going to look those up. Okay, these are things we just look up in the, these are kind of like, like givens. You look them up in the internet, maybe they're given to you in the problem. We know the mass of a proton. We know the mass of a neutron is that. Those are given in atomic mass units, U for atomic mass units. And then afterwards, we're going to multiply those by two because we have two protons and we also have two neutrons. And then we're going to add those two masses together and that's going to give us the total mass of two individual protons and two individual neutrons before they're bound in the nucleus. So we're going to call that, as we said before, the mass before, MB mass before. Then we're going to go and we're going to look up, well, what is the rest mass? What is the mass of a helium-4 nucleus in atomic units, average atomic mass units, or excuse me, atomic mass units? And that is 4.00153. And you'll notice, as we said, because this is the mass afterwards, you'll notice that the mass afterwards is less. This is 1, this is 3188, this is 0153. So there's a difference in the mass, and that difference in the mass, that is what we call the mass defect. So the mass defect, the difference in the mass of the individual constituents and the helium nucleus, the mass defect in this case is 0 0.03035 atomic mass units. And we're going to convert that mass into energy using Einstein's equation, which we're going to do on the next slide. So we're going to use Einstein's equation. This is Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. But for this equation, the mass has to be given in kilograms. So we're going to convert to kilograms. This is the energy we get out in joules. This is the mass in kilograms. And this is C, the speed of light. And we're going to square the speed of light, E equals mc squared. So we're going to convert our mass defect in atomic mass units to kilograms, and we know that one atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. That gives us the mass defect in kilograms is 5.04 times 10 to the minus 29 kilograms. Now, as we said, we're going to use Einstein's equation because now we have kilograms. We're just going to plug those values in. That's the mass defect in kilograms. That's the speed of light squared. And that gives us that the energy, the binding energy, uh, for the helium-4 nucleus is 4.53 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. Now, that's in joules. You can see we went from a mass and atomic mass units, mass and kilograms, and then we converted using Einstein's equation to energy in joules, but we like to give the energy in, uh, what do we give it in? Electron, electron volts or mega electron volts. So here's our previous information. Mass, mass, energy in joules. We know, again, this is just kind of like a unit. It's all like unit conversions. This is the energy in joules. We're going to convert that because we know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, and that gives us 28.3 times 10 to the 6 electron volts, which we would say that is 28.3 mega electron volts. So that's the total energy, the total binding energy, but we often want to know what's the binding energy per nucleon. Well, there's four nucleons. That's helium-4. 
there's four nucleons, two protons and two neutrons, which simply just divide by four, and we get that the average binding energy per nucleon is 7.08 mega electron volts. Now, you may know that or may something if you've seen this graph before. Commonly shown in these problems, we have the number of nucleons, and this is the average binding energy per nucleon, and see here is uh, helium-4. These are the lighter elements, these are the heavier elements. Here is, right here, uh, helium-4, and you can see it's just over 7, or right around 7. You can see that's what we got right there. So that kind of confirms we got, hopefully, the right answer for that. Okay, so now there's one other thing. He here's we converted uh, into a mega electron volts. Now there's a little bit easier way to convert into mega electron volts if you're aware of this, because there's a direct conversion factor. Again, this is all just like conversions and conversion factor. There's a direct conversion between uh, atomic mass units and mega electron volts because we know that one uh, atomic mass unit is also equal to 3.931.5 mega electron volts. And I'm just going to do this for the total. Of course, you could divide by 4 and get the same answer. But you see we get the same answer for the total binding energy of 28.3 mega electron volts. Okay, that's a little easier. I think the other equation is sometimes a little more interesting because it shows you the relationship between energy and mass and Einstein's equation, which everybody loves, e equals mc squared. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me, of course, a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll hope to see you in the next video.